This is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield from The Lynn Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Michael provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, Retirement Income Planning, Wealth Management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield. Welcome back to The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield, and I'm Tana Pennington. Great. Hello. I hope everyone had a good weekend, actually. Super Bowl weekend, Tana. No, exciting how that game was just kind of, you know, at the edge of your seat towards the end there, overtime. It was. It was. I have See, to admit, I thought the 49ers were going to win, but uh, well, Chiefs came in pretty interesting. Yeah. But a lot of fun. Great energy. Yeah. But um, the great news the uh, stock market is on an all time high. So, it high is. five. S&P 500 right, is we above should a, 5, We should do a 000. webinar high five. High five. High five. High five. But is that really what it looks like in, you know, out there? Is that? Well, that, yeah. Happening? And that's what, yeah. that's what Tan and I have been talking about yeah. is because, you know, uh, a few weeks ago we did a video and what we talked about is, you know, what is our goal for the year? And, you know, we said we had cautious optimism mm -hmm. and, you know, we said, you know, the S&P getting the 51, 5,200. Yeah, You know, you could see that path pretty quickly based on a number of things. You know, certainly the presidential election has a huge impact on that. Earnings year over year have a huge impact on that. Mm -hmm. And then, the you know, the, the triple threat would be then the, the Fed's coming in and cutting rates. Yep. And so when you look at all of those things, say, OK, there's an argument. But now that the S&P 500 has been on a little bit of a tear and doing, quote unquote, well, um, all of a sudden you start to say, well, okay, are we getting a little ahead of ourselves? Mm -hmm. Is there something else going on here? Do we need right. to be conscious of this? So here, let me plop it this on the screen. So there it is. Hot diggity dog. The S&P 500 today at all time highs of all time highs. Doesn't matter what, what time period I use. If I just keep zooming out, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It is awesome. Everybody loves it. We are so happy and excited. We're yeah. It feels good. Back because it's but. only up because of me and Tana. <laughs> it does feel good, you know. Yeah. The problem is, it's artificial. Is this, is it's artificial. <laughs> yeah. the, the problem is, the stock market is a truly terrible metric of health, of economics. Right. Uh, you know, obviously, it gets into the fundamentals of companies and all of this. But to be fair, in many respects, the stock market is also very emotional and very erratic in the moment. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is, I'd say, problematic with the visualness of this is, is right here. So I've showed this to you guys a lot over the years. Um, we've talked about this quite a bit. So in the S&P 500, right now, there are 503 companies. Okay, that's cool. Look at this. Big dog NVIDIA, top. It's up 45% this year. Facebook, also known as Meta, because they're going to put you in the metaverse. Up 30%. Palo Alto, you know, uh, internet security kind of stuff, up 30%. So you got these beast yeah. giant companies up here that are doing well. Now, if I was to scrizzle my nizzle down, what you're going to notice is da 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 da. Oh, once I get to about, you know, 250, where are we at? Or 255, all of a sudden it turns red. And all of a sudden it's red. Now it's real red. Yeah. And, and these companies are down like a decent, you know? Right. Intel's down 14%. Wow, it's a big company. What the heck? And so the the, the worst company, 503, is down 27% this year. Mm -hmm. uh, number 503. They should cut them off. Look at Tesla down 22%. Big, giant companies. So what's interesting is the S&P 500 says it's up 6% this year. But wait a second. Half of the companies are full blown negative, and even mm -hmm. if I go to the positives, like here I'm in the positives. Uh, Tana, would you call a point no. one one percent return a phenomenal return? No, not at all. No, it's it's flat. It hasn't done anything, and so there's a whole huge tranche yeah. of these little little Benign, meany yeah. kind of sissy sure. return ones happening here at the moment, right? You know, a yeah. couple percent, and then all of a sudden you get to the top. Yeah. Satana, so, 
How the heck is the stock market, quote unquote, up so much and the S&P 500 at all time highs if half the companies are falling apart and a third of the companies are just dying flat on the side of the road this year? Well, it's because the S&P is market weighted. So these large, big companies are affecting it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a visual yeah. scam. Yeah, uh, this is terrible to see. But anybody who comes into my office has seen this up on the TV. <laughs> we always put the S and P five hundred heat map on here. Um, sorry, I couldn't size it better here. I'm not that tech savvy. But what's funny is, yeah, Tana's totally right. There's different sized companies, and so right. the ones that you can visually see on the screen here: the Microsoft, the Apple, the mm -hmm. Google, the Meta, the Amazon, Tesla. These things are bigger because they're larger companies, and so when they do well. They, they skew the math of everything else. Mm -hmm. all junk in the lower right side that you can't read any of it. Those are all companies too. And if they're all negative, but NVIDIA is up 50% this mm -hmm. year, it, it has carried the index forward. Right. The reason that we harp on this is I'm trying to make a point that are you looking at things clearly? Are things as healthy and normal mm -hmm. as they're being presented to you? Or are there things underneath the surface. Um, a great way to look at this is is like, uh, here, Tana made me do this actually. So blame her. I did. Uh, we, we put in uh, the S&P 500 and we, yep. we last year and we put it against what's called an equal weighted S&P 500. So if these companies weren't giant and they were all just the same mm -hmm. and how they do was represented in the mm -hmm. same level, then the S&P 500 would be up 11% last year instead of being up a little over 20%. That's crazy. That's You're interesting. Insane. Yeah. You know, the s and is up almost 6%. The equal weighted s and is only up 1%. Yeah, that's a big difference. That's a big difference yeah. as you start to look at how healthy is, is the stock market. Is it telling the good story? So, yes, the index is at all-time highs. Yes, it feels really good. But it's just something to be very conscious about, mm -hmm. that it's a narrow rally right now. A handful of companies are doing yeah. really well. That's carrying the market up at the moment visually. And so what does that mean when NVIDIA finally falls apart? What does that mean when Microsoft cracks or when Apple cracks? Because they tend to. I mean, heck, NVIDIA is a company. You know, let's, let's look at a chart for giggles. NVDA. I wasn't planning on doing this. I'm digressing. Tana's like, stick to the script. Stick to the script. <laughs> We don't ever you know, have a script. At, at one point, it was a $300 stock in 21. It went all the way down to $112 stock mm -hmm. in 22. In a year, mm -hmm. it lost, well, I don't even know what that is. What is that, 60% of its value or something? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it's been on a tear lately, but what happens when it finally gets pouty again? Right. I mean, even a monster stock like Apple stock, you know, phenomenal investment, a trillion dollar company. In the last 20 years, they've probably lost 50% of their value three or four mm -hmm. times. It happens. These things come in favor, they go out of favor. They come in favor, they go out of favor. And so since the market has gotten so drug addicted to these big boys right now, what happens when they get pouty? Will the stock market hold up as much? But to that deeper theme. Is the stock market, is the economy as healthy as we think if most companies were negative? I mean, not most, but last year, a third of the companies in the S&P 500 were negative. So are we getting a very good breath of how the, the these investments are doing? But let's talk about economics because the economy has got to be doing good, right? The stock market's at all-time highs. Everyone's rich now, Tana. No. We know Tana is. No. Private jets. No, no private revenue. jets. This one, this one's interesting. Tan and I have been harping on credit card debt. Yeah, right? this is a we big talk problem. About it a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's at like 1.3 trillion now. Uh, I don't know. Less than six months ago, is it a trillion? It just keeps getting bigger. Wow. And here, this just came out in the last few weeks that the United States there was a 50 percent surge in credit card delinquencies last year. What? <laughs> That sounds like a problem. That's a big problem. There's more credit card debt than we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. People are starting to default on it. That seems problematic. In fact, if I was to uh, come over here, uh, usdebtclock.org, everybody, you should all hang out on this website. Maybe put it as your screensaver on your computer. That way it can make you sick and sad. Um, I need to annotate on it. But right in this middle red section, 
uh, un unfunded debt and interest, the lower right of it, there's one says credit card debt. So we can see here the running total for credit card debt is about almost 1.4 trillion now, mm -hmm. which equates to about $8,000 per card holder. Now, I know that's not a lot of money to Tana, um, but to other, Tana hates the, the, the rich white privilege jokes, but what? I enjoy them. The, um, Don't want what? What you see if you if you got wise you do them back at me and then after a while I'd be like crud and then oh, I probably no. stop doing them at you to to avoid you know focus on me. Um, the um, but in any case you know eight thousand dollars of credit card debt when you look at the the national average family of four that's bringing in sixty seventy thousand dollars yeah. a year I have to be honest that's that's an insurmountable right. amount of money for many normal people to deal with. And this just keeps creeping higher and higher. The snowball is getting bigger. That yeah. is very problematic. That is extremely concerning. Yeah. The interest rates on those credit cards just make it impossible to pay down. If you oh, get, it's brutal. Yeah. It's yeah. brutal. And, and even if you made the payments and you paid it down yeah. over the 17 years or whatever the crazy amortization table is on that, you're still you're getting spending like 30,000 on yeah. the eight or something. I mean, it's just, crazy math. Mm -hmm. And so this is really tough right now because there's just these little, little things that I kind of describe it as little, the side of the economy, just it's crumbling on the edges right now. And mm -hmm. nobody's really focusing on this. Um, you know, another thing that's very interesting, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, January jobs numbers came out and it was held a phenomenal report by the government and everybody involved. Look at this. 353,000 jobs were created in January. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. This is manna from heaven. Um, <laughs> what was it even interesting in there is in addition to those jobs created in January, November and December, there was another 100,000 jo jobs revised upwards because they're always revising the numbers. And so visually that feels really good. And so if we just want to read the headline, everybody, you go get your, your Wall Street Journal, your New York Times or whatever, and it says all these jobs are created, you say, Awesome, 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 right? But when you get into the details of the jobs report, because this is what matters, it's 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 kind of like that the return on the S and P five hundred yeah. index is different from how the companies are doing in the index. Uh, la, 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 la. This is the best part of the show right here. Let's see, not my show. I just spent this this article. Um, in spite of the solid payroll numbers, total hours worked in the private sector declined 03 percent in January. Now, one would say, "What's so? That doesn't sound like anything." But remember, why does the government care so much about jobs? Payroll taxes, people Bring having in. money. Yeah. Uh, they're they're out buying stuff at Taco Bell. It creates GDP. Yeah. It's economic growth, right? Mm -hmm. We want people working. We want people making money. This this adds to economics. That small little drop in hours worked represents losing 465,000 jobs in the economy. Wow. That's shocking. That is. So so this isn't even this isn't even good. This is more of a wash. Yeah, more people are getting hired, but the reality is the economy has softened enough that the employers aren't allowing the people to work as much yeah, or as long point. or they got a lot more part-time employees sure. than full-time employees. This is that's really problematic. I mean that that is more important to me than how many physical jobs are out there. Mm -hmm. What are the quality of the jobs? What are the pay rates of the jobs and right. the hours associated with those jobs? We need the average hours increasing a little bit because that massively increases tax revenue to the federal government, right. increases GDP, all that fun stuff. Tana sent me this article and I think it's because she thinks Jamie Dimon is cute. <laughs> Yeah, he does have a nice head of hair, which I, oh, I do have an eye for. Um, it's one of those, it's my curse. The um, Jamie Dimon believes U.S. debt is the most predictable crisis in history. How could it not be? You know, what he talks about in this article is it goes through the theme of obviously our debt has spiraled out of control. Yep. And so as you fast forward that thought process and you think about this, how is this not a predictable issue that's shaping up? Now, before I kind of get into the, the nuts and bolts of this for a second, the one thing I would preface is Tan and I, you know, just kind of our own thoughts, processes, research, things like that. Hey, I forgot to wear my wedding ring today. That's weird. Um, 
grabbed my hand. I felt naked. The um, the <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. What happens is as the debt grows and spirals bigger and bigger, as as we're obviously doing right now, we are mathematically completely out of control with our government spending. Mm -hmm. um, even in the last show, Tan and I did is well. What if we tax the rich to save the day? What if we what if we um, you know raise tax rates to one hundred percent on all the wealthy people to save the day? It doesn't do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Our, everything is so far out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the runaway train. The good news is the government can can play this game for a while. So I would suspect that we're good at least through 2030. After that, you know, everyone should start digging their bunker. But um, but what's interesting in this article is it says that hey, federal debt interest is around four percent of the debt, which then manifests into 5.2 percent of GDP interest expenses. Now, this is a frustrating thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody always talks about, well, the debt's still healthy because as a percentage of our GDP, it's only 5%. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I see that as one ratio. And so kind of here's what it is right here is uh, right side, kind of right below the upper green stuff. There's this section that's called interest on debt. And it's 750 billion. So this year we're going to spend about 750 billion dollars to service it. But mm -hmm. their argument, is, but look at right above it, the line above it, U.S. gross domestic product GDP. It's almost 28 trillion. So that's peanuts, man. 750 billion is peanuts. It's only five percent of the big number. So who cares? Well, the way I look at that, it, like that's like me saying, like, hey, I don't know, uh, you know. I, I can't even think of a good analogy. I know. I, I, it's so I one, and then I stress tested it in my head. I'm like, that makes no nope. sense. That's doesn't stupid. work. Let's, let's run with this. The way I look at this is think about your own situation in the sense of how much money do you bring in? Yeah. And how much does servicing your debt cost? It kind of goes back to that little thing of if, if someone has $8,000 on their credit card and that credit card's at 25% interest, you know, what is the interest payment relative to them making 60 grand a year? Right. The U.S. makes four to five trillion dollars. That top number on the right side of the page here. The U.S. makes four to five trillion dollars of tax revenue right now. We're going to spend 750 billion dollars this year servicing our interest. That's like 15 to 20 percent of our tax revenue. Yeah. To me, that's a way more relevant thing to look at. And, and in, when you look at it that way, it's extremely terrifying. Yeah. Because guess what? The interest on the debt is going up right now. Right. We have to constantly refinance our debt. A few years ago, it was cheap to refinance debt. It's now being refinanced at four and five percent. Mm -hmm. I believe we're refinancing somewhere around seven and a half trillion dollars right. of our giant thirty-four trillion dollar debt. Um, this thing's going to be a um, one point five trillion. They said by twenty thirty-two or something. Mm. Uh, what? This is a huge problem. I mean, heck, right next to it, you can see the defense budget is $850 billion. Our interest on debt, just the interest, not servicing the debt, not paying down the debt, just right. the interest is almost as much as our our, our defense budget. It's, it's huge. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. So these are some very interesting things. Um, kind of to bring this all full circle, why are we talking about this today? Obviously, it feels really good when the stock market's at all-time highs. Obviously, it feels really good when your accounts are up. Everything feels good. Um, but going back to the theme in the beginning of cautious optimism is don't fall into the investor trap of, of FOMO, fear of missing out. Hey, the thing's been going well. I, I don't want to miss out on the more. This might be a good opportunity if your mm -hmm. accounts are doing well, if things are going well, if things are a little higher in your portfolios than you thought. Why don't you just trim a little bit off the top? Yeah. Take a little bit of the winnings off the table. Soften this stuff out just a little bit. Uh, doesn't mean you can't be invested in the stock market. Obviously, the stock market over long periods of time is going to do extremely well. That is not our issue. The question is, are we getting to a cyclical moment here where mm -hmm. things have just been going a little too well lately? Yeah. And we, you know, and the whole premise of the credit card debt and the economic data and all of this stuff is these are things that we need to be a little conscious of. And so right. there's nothing wrong with uh, making sure that you preserve some of your, your winnings. Um, 
And there's a lot of different ways to do that, right? I mean, you can obviously switch from growth stocks to value stocks. I mean, that's that's a simple way to you know mm -hmm. lower the beta of a portfolio. You can go into structured notes that provide perfect, per, uh, protection. That's something mm -hmm. Tan and I do very actively with our clients and our accounts. Uh, you can obviously go into money markets right now that still pay four or five percent. Mm -hmm. You can go into fixed annuities paying four or five percent. There's all kinds of things you can do. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying panic and take all your money out of the stock market. That would be stupid. Um, but you know, if if you're up a lot and things are going well for you, you know, what's wrong with a we'll say uh, maybe taking it ten percent off your equity or something like that? This is not perceived as a investment recommendation. Uh, past performance and future results and blah blah blah. That was a joke. That was a disclosure, Tam. I know. A disclaimer. So I was waiting yeah, for you to speed happens. up your because they're usually what so long. It? Those disclaimers are like yeah, spending. this can cause <laughs> nausea, bloating. Like <laughs> we should read off the whole list of what yeah. investing can cause right? as a byproduct. So, anyways, hey, that's all we got for today. We talked your heads off. I apologize. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, thoughts, concerns? Obviously, call the office, 805-500-7035. Visit our main website, thelindgroup.com. And everybody have a great week.